Hello, indie authors. This is Valerie Eason, and today is April 24th, 2019. As I record this, welcome to the Indie Author Mentor Show, and it is episode eight today. Today, I'm talking about the next six steps on my writing and publishing checklist. And remember, you can get that checklist by signing up for my writer's mailing list at the bottom of the homepage of my website. ValerieIsanAuthor.com, I-H-S-A-N. Those steps are mostly the ones um, about reviewing the manuscript and proofreading, and, and so we'll get into that later. But first, a personal update. Um, this past weekend, I taught a class on email marketing, uh, specifically email automation series, and how to design one of those. So that was a fun day and um, the next day I visited with some friends that I hadn't seen in ages so that was also really fun. Um, it's good you know to catch up with friends that you haven't seen for a while so if you guys are listening it was super fun on Sunday. <laughs> um, also I sent out a survey to my mailing list and 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 for doing that survey I I'm entering the people that do this survey into a drawing for two books that I'm passing on. One is The Complete Writer's Guide to Heroes and Heroines, 16 Master Archetypes. And the other one is Lady Killers, Deadly Women Throughout History. So the one drawing will be for both of these books. And the the survey is just really short. It's five questions long, and I mostly sent it to past students, but really anybody in the writing community can answer at least some of those five questions. And the reason I decided to send a survey out, which, I mean, I'm, I'm realistic. I know that lots of people don't do surveys, and frankly, I don't do all the surveys that come my way either. So I'm really hoping that you may consider doing this survey because it's geared toward what your specific pain points are or challenges that you are experiencing in your author world right now because I really want to design a, a series of classes and, and also focus my author coaching, my, my indie publisher coaching on those specific pain points so that I can be, you know, more valuable and more useful to you. So um, that's why I sent out the survey, just to get a better idea of what the community needs, either locally or globally, in terms of, of help. I mean, we have so many fantastic resources on the internet available at the click of a button, you know, and, and, and I certainly utilize those resources myself and I'm happy to point you in those directions as well. But what can I do for you? Um, and, and I'm trying to, um, figure out based on feedback I get from other people and also, you know, some more interpersonal, like looking inside, what is that thing that I can bring to someone's, um, I guess, author journey? I know that's kind of a cliched word now, but <laughs> how can I help you go through the process of publishing your books that's different than someone else that could do the same thing? Um, so far, the feedback I'm getting is that I'm approachable and I'm flexible and I'm patient with questions, which is all good things. And <laughs> I appreciate that feedback. So any more feedback would be really great. So if you're interested in um, doing the survey and getting into the drawing, you can um, contact me via the contact form on my website, ValerieIsanAuthor.com. Or through social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram mostly. Or you can just email me direct, Valerie at ValerieIsanAuthor.com, and I'll send you the questions. And you have until May 1st to do the survey, and the drawing will be done on the 2nd. Um, on May 7th, I will be speaking about editing website and blog content if you are in the Eugene, Oregon area. It's... Um, it's for the Lane Contact meeting, which is a networking, a free networking meeting that 
happens once a month on the first Tuesday, I believe, of the month. So that's May 7th this month coming up. And um, that office is at 315 West Broadway in Eugene, Oregon. It's in the Osteo Strong office building. Um, now the other things that I've been working on this past week, I picked up the book Story Arcana, which is um, a book written by um, an author for authors. Um, it's tarot for writers, basically, like explaining the major arcana of, of the tarot decks and how you can use that when you're stuck in your writing. Um, on, on multiple levels. And so that sounded really interesting. And I've been hearing it kind of in the podcast space lately. And I heard her do an interview. Um, the author is Carolyn Donahue, Caroline Donahue. I don't know if it's Carolyn or Caroline. I can't remember now. Um, and I'd never purchased a tarot deck before. I, I'd played around with Oracle decks, and I and I liked those. But I'd never purchased an, a tarot deck. So I went and purchased one for the purposes of like studying it, going through the story Arcana book. And apparently the tarot book that, or the tarot deck that I bought is not a traditional tarot deck, <laughs> which is kind of lame. You know, I, I wouldn't have known it wasn't traditional until I opened it up and saw that, you know, none of the cards that the story Arcana, the major Arcana cards, like the fool and the magician and, I don't even know them all, but those I think are the first two. Um, those are not in this deck. So um, <laughs> I either need to get another deck or figure out how to use this deck with the Story Arcana book. But anyway, it sounds really fascinating, and I've glanced through. I just got it um, in the mail yesterday or the day before, and um, I just kind of glanced through the book this morning, and it just looks really interesting and a fantastic way to help yourself through stuck points in your manuscript process, whether it, whether you're stuck because the character, you don't know enough about the character, or maybe you don't know enough about the whole book project to go forward, or maybe there's something in you that's stuck that you need to work out before you can work the problem out in the book. So it sounds really great, and I'll report back, but that's what I'm working on. Also, I had my one-on-one -on -one coaching session with Becca Syme of the Quick Cast and also of the Smarty Pants Book Marketing Podcast. Um, I got some clarity about um, the way in which to start that research of, of what kind of classes and coaching I should provide my students and clients, and that's what made me think of the the survey and and sending that out. So if you, um, well, I'll get to that in the resource section. So let's do patrons. Thank you to um, new patron this week is the band Chasing Ebenezer. Thank you so much to Heidi and Ben. I actually talked with them yesterday. We're in the same book club. <laughs> so I got a chance to see them. And uh, yeah, that was really special. Thanks, Heidi. And Thank you to all of my patrons. The support of my patrons on Patreon helps make this show and other projects possible. Plus, being a patron of the arts is a totally cool thing to do. Joining my Patreon community also gets you sneak peeks into my creative world through uh, monthly connection videos that I send out to my patrons. It allows you to interact with me directly, and it also rewards you with exclusive bonus content you can't get anywhere else. For less than a cost of a tasty hot beverage or a pack of gum, as low as a dollar a month, you too can become a patron of the arts and me. Find me on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Valerie Isan, I-H-S-A-N. So resources and reviews. Um, I do recommend the Gallup Strengths center.com. So I did take that in, in um, preparation for Becca Symes uh, class on the strengths for writers. I took the Gallup Strengths Finder assessment to figure out what my top five strengths were in order to take the class. And um, it's just, it was, it, I told you last week, it was really fascinating and 
And so I do recommend it. Even if you don't take a class with Becca, I do recommend going to gallopstrengthscenter.com and taking the test that's there. Um, if you do think that you're going to take a class with Becca, then the cost of the Clifton Strengths Assessment um, is wrapped into the class. So you take the class and then she gives you a code to take the, the test. But if you're not planning on taking a test with Becca, then you can just go straight to gallopstrengthscenter.com and take the test yourself. And, and then you'll have the information and they provide you a report and what it means. And it's, it's pretty interesting. And, and you can see right away how it can affect your writing. So that's cool. So if you're interested in learning more about Becca Syme and her coaching and her classing, you can go classes, you can go to betterfasteracademy.com. Um, I'm going to add a new section to this check-in, and uh, it's just called I'm Reading. <laughs> I'm reading lots of books right now, and I have so many new books that have come into my world that I cannot wait to read that I'm feeling not overwhelmed, just kind of giddy with, I just can't wait. I wish I could read them all at the same time. <laughs> and I've often wanted to go on um, a reading vacation where that's like the only thing I'm doing and by myself. And I've got, you know, tasty beverages, whether it's in a hot place and it's a pina colada or a mojito, or if it's a cold place and I'm drinking copious amounts of tea. But either way, I want to have a stack of books and to be able to read uninterrupted for like a week or two or something. That would just be delicious. And I'm really wondering if anybody listening has ever gone on a reading vacation. I really want to know. So please email me or send me a message through Instagram or something and let me know if you've ever gone on a, a reading vacation and what that was like for you. And, uh, Anyway, so the, the, one of the books I'm reading right now is called um, Newsletter Ninja, How to Become an Author Mailing List Expert by Tammy Labreck. So I'm looking forward to getting lots of tips and tricks and inspiration and insight into how to create a better mailing list. I do email my student mailing list a lot more these days, but my poor <laughs> fiction list is kind of dwindling. So um in, not dwindling in uh, subscribers, but dwindling in uh, my, my, I try to mail something out once a month to them. And it's been probably five months since I've emailed anything. So I've got a really nice automation sequence for my fiction list. But um, yeah, I haven't done anything special for them lately. And it's been on my mind. So I'm hoping reading this book will will allow me to um, connect with my readers on a different level than I have been. And I think that's important too if you're trying to get away from social media or if social media is just not working for you or for whatever reason. Maybe it's just depressing to be on Facebook or if, if you're not seeing a lot of interaction from your fans and readers on social media, it's just, it's really not necessary. It's, I think it's a really valuable tool for delivery um, and Becca just pointed that out for me too. I, I can be posting the links to this podcast on sh social media, which I haven't been doing. Um, but in terms of trying to connect with people, um, that are students or, um, past students or fans that the email newsletter is really where to do that. So I'm looking forward to getting through newsletter ninja by Tammy Labreck. Okay, let's get on with the main topics, which are going to be um, mainly that proofreading and um, review, final edits, that sort of thing. So the next six steps on my list. Okay, so you want to finalize your ebook cover design. So you're working with a cover designer. Please, please, please tell me that you're working with a cover designer. So she's going to mock up um, the design and put all of the information that you have given her into the slots, you know, and, and put your author name where you want it to be, and you've provided the back cover copy and, and such, all of those things she's going to be putting onto your book cover design. Um, actually, I want to amend that. The back cover copy, obviously, is going to be for a print cover. So this is just the ebook cover design that you're going to be finalizing at this point 
on the checklist. Um, the print cover design is later because you need to know exactly how many pages are going to be in your manuscript so that you know what the spine size is going to be before the final print cover can be made because a, a print cover includes the front cover, the spine, and the back cover. That is the whole PDF. Okay, so your ebook cover design needs to be approved. And so your cover designer is going to send you a proof of your design. And you can look at it and say, yes, I like this, or no, could you move this over, or could you change the font on this, or whatever you need to do to make the cover look the best that you think it can be. Keeping in mind that the designer is the one with the designer eye and the designer knowledge and and even though you may like the look of a book cover, it might not be the best selling. The, the sales possibility it might be lower on, a, on, on covers that you like better because it doesn't have the design aspect that, that book sales, that will elicit book sales, if that makes any sense. If you've got two book covers and you say, oh, I really like this one the best, then your cover designer might go, okay, here you go. But they know that this other like book B, book cover B, is better because it's more catered to the genre that you're writing in. Because you really want the book cover to be immediately, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When a customer is scanning through thumbnail size book covers, you want it to be immediately obvious what genre it is because they're not even going to click on it and look at it if it doesn't look like the genre they're looking for. So even though you want your book cover to to be, um, you know, stand out a little bit and be a little bit different so it doesn't look like everything else, but you kind of do want it to look like everything else because you want it to be genre specific. Okay, so finalize your ebook cover design. And usually that's just a click of a button. They send you the proof, you click accept, and then it's done. And then you pay. <laughs> okay, the next step is to make your final edits to the manuscript. At this point, you've gotten it back from your editor, um, you've gotten it back from your beta readers, and you're incorporating all of the feedback that you've gotten from the beta readers and from your editor. And I don't know how long this will take you. And if this is your first book, you don't know how long this is going to take you. If it's your second book or your third book, maybe you'll know, but maybe you won't know how long it will take. And I think that every book project is different. And sometimes the feedback that you get from your editor based on, on what type of book project this is could be more extensive than the last book you read just because maybe you've shif shifted genres or um, you know maybe it's a it's a different uh, style of writing and and you're not maybe it just needs some work and so your edits might be more extensive than you were expecting and that's totally fine getting an editing checklist is not a big deal if you if you get your let me let me amend that it might feel overwhelming to get back all the notes and the report from the editor, but don't be despondent. Let it come. <laughs> Let it wash over you. Process the, 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 the needs and the emotions that you're getting that come flooding in when you get the report back. Feel those feelings and then read the report again and realize, okay, this is all constructive feedback. It's telling me exactly what I need to fix. This is great. It's hard when you get feedback that says, you yeah, know, this just really didn't work for me. I don't know why, because then you don't know what to do with that. But when you get feedback from an editor that says, this sentence structure is awkward. I don't understand what's going on here. Or um, maybe the feedback is, you know, I really need some more concrete sensory details because I just don't know where I am in time and space in this scene. I, I don't understand, you know, it just feels like I'm walking around in a black room. I don't know where I am. And I keep forgetting what the main character looks like because I just don't have any touchstones. And there's no um, 
like mannerisms that I can attach in my brain to this character. So those are great constructive feedback um, critiques because then you can just go in and, all right, I need to go add uh, senses to this scene. Check. Okay, now I need to go and add mannerisms to all the places where this character is in the book. Check, check, check. Okay, you know, it's it's good advice, or excuse me, it's good, it's good critique when there is specific things that you can go in and fix. So go in, fix those things, and also remember that when your editor gives you suggestions, you don't have to take them. You know, maybe you like the sparsity and you don't want the character to have mannerisms. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of a funny um, example, but whatever. I just mean you don't have to take all the suggestions. So I usually take a good 80% of what my editor suggests. Sometimes I leave certain sentences in the way they are because I want... I, there's a specific reason why. It's not that I just don't know how to write that sentence. It's that I want it to be like that for a reason. Okay, make your final edits to the manuscript, and then you want to send that manuscript to a proofreader. Now, you have two choices. You can send the, the, proof, the copy to be proofread to the editor that just edited it and say, okay, I've made all your, you know, I've made all the, the changes, read it again, and just make sure there's no typos or whatever, and that I've make sure I didn't leave out a, a period by accident or something like that. Um, or somebody completely brand new. You could do either. There's pros and cons to both. I think that it makes more sense to send it to completely new eyes that haven't you know, read the book because if, if an editor has dived deep and gone through the manuscript line by line, if they go through that again, they're going to you know, it, chances are they're going to gloss over something because they'll just remember it from the last time they read it and they, they might not see the individual typos or an extra space. Or I mean, when a proofreader is really going for that super nitty gritty, like is there two spaces next to this word and there should only be one? Is there a comma here and it should be on the other side of the word instead of this side? You know, and then obviously typos and stuff, and or or just a, a word that's not used correctly. Like, did you write vicious instead of viscous? You know, and spell check's not going to pick that up. So um, make that decision. Do you want to? Do you want the proofreader to be someone completely new, or do you want to just send it to the editor because you like working with that person and? They give you a discount because you're doing both the line editing and the proofreading with them, what, whatever it is. So do that. Send it to the proofreader. Now, when you get the, the manuscript back from the proofreader, of course, review the proofread notes and resolve any and all issues. So this is the final copy now. So when you take that final copy, you want to create an EPUB and a MOBI file. These are the ebook files, and you need to have these. This is really basic, but if, if you don't know, you need to have a Mobi and an EPUB file so that when you read the document, the book, on an e reader, the text moves based on the size of your e reader. So some people are reading on their iPhone, some people are reading on a, a tablet, an iPad. Some people are reading on a Kindle Fire. Some people are reading on um, a Kobo e-reader. And they're all different shapes and they're all different sizes. So the, the file needs to be able to move based on, the doc, based on the reader that you're reading it on. And a PDF doesn't do that. A PDF is fixed. Um, so a Mobi file is exclusive to Amazon. That's the only thing that you can read on an Amazon device and only Amazon devices can read a Mobi file. So you need to have a Mobi file created and you need to have an EPUB file created. And the EPUB is for everybody else, all the other e-readers on the planet. <laughs> but Mobi is strictly for Amazon um, e-reading products. 
the way to create those files, you can send it away to a digitizer to do it, but you can do it yourself for free. And that's what I recommend. Um, <clears throat> Vellum is a software that is for Mac users only, and it's $1.99 for just the, the, the part of the software that changes your doc file, your Word doc file, docx file, into those EPUB and e Mobi files. If you pay extra and buy the $2.99, I think that's what it is at this point in 2019, version, then it will also create a PDF for you to and do the, in, the inter, internal layout design of the book <clears throat> uh, for the paperback. Um, so that's what I use. I use Vellum. I use a Mac, MacBook Pro. Um, I had to look down to see what it was called. <laughs> But if you don't have a Mac or you don't want to spend the money for that piece of software, Draft to Digital and Readsy both have free book editors programs. And the, and all of them, Vellum and Draft to Digital and Readsy, they the it's a template software. So if you go into Draft to Digital and you have an account with them, it, this is just a free service they provide for their auth authors. And in fact, you can use that. Um, book editor service at draft to digital and not publish with draft to digital if you don't want to it's just a free service they provide of course they want you to put your books through book a draft to digital but you know you don't have to so you just upload no matter what you're using readsy or draft to digital or uh, vellum you just upload a docx file from word or whatever and then you choose the templates that you want. And there's a whole bunch of different ones, and they're beautiful. And they put the page numbers in for you, and they do the drop caps if you want drop caps, and they put um, scene break art in if you want scene break art, and there's nonfiction templates and fiction templates, and there's even um, genre-specific templates, you know, if you're writing a thriller and you want it to look a certain way, or if you're writing romance and you want it to look a certain way. So I like putting my docx file in and then just like clicking on all of the templates, and you'll see the page change and the different art come up so you can see what it looks like in the preview mode, and um, I just like picking the one that seems to resonate the most with the theme of the book. So that's what I like doing. That's that's the fun part. It's really fun. Also, um, at the creativepen.com, Joanna Penn has created a, um, it's on her YouTube channel. She created a video um, for a tutorial for using Vellum. So if you are using Vellum and you would like a visual um, tutorial on how to do it, she has a, a real quick video on her channel, the Creative Pen. Okay, one last tip today, um, or checklist item, is to proof the digital files on multiple devices if that is available to you. So when you use Vellum or, you know, draft a digital service or whatever, you can choose, um, oh no, now I don't know for sure. I know you can, yeah, you can on both of them. There's a place, usually up at the top right-hand corner, depending on which software you're using, that will allow you to choose um, various um, reading devices. You know, you can click on Kindle Fire and see what it would look like on a Kindle Fire. You could click on um, iPhone and see what the book would look like in an iPhone. And and so what I do is once I, I pick one and then I'll go through every single page of the ebook in this preview mode on, on this device mode and, and look and see if it looks funny or, you know, if there's any weirdness or if there's any double pages or I don't know, if there's just any problem, I'll just give it a, a quick um, proof check and see what it looks like. And I'll do that on a, on a couple different um, devices. And, and I have a Kindle Paperwhite and I also have a Kobo Forma, Formo, Forma, excuse me, e-reader. So I can, I can do that on my personal devices too. And so I'll actually upload it to my own device and sit and read it, you know, or, or at least flip through it and, and look at it as a customer would look at it to see if there's any 
issues with it. So proof it on the devices if you have them, and if not, you can always use the previewer and, and just go through as, you know, as many as you want to, really. The more you do, the better. But, but know that it will look different on each device, and, and sometimes the, the PDF, or excuse me, sometimes the EPUB that you create might have, um, like, okay, here's a common mistake that happens when you're creating a, an EPUB file is that sometimes if you um, are going from, if you, if you say chapter one on your document, but if the template you're using creates its own automatic chapter headings, like just a numeral or, or maybe they have a different chapter heading um, template. So maybe what I'm saying is maybe when your EPUB file comes out, it'll say chapter one, chapter one, you know, and that's just a mistake that you have to go in and take your chapter one heading out so that their automatic chapter heading will show up instead and not be doubled. So, you know, something like that will happen. And you will only see that if you look at it on a device. So, so that's why you need to prove it on a device. So that is the next six steps in your writing and publishing checklist. Again, briefly, those are to finalize the ebook cover design, approve that proof from the designer, make your final edits to the manuscript based on editor and beta reader feedback, send that manuscript to a proofreader, which can be the same person as the line editor or a totally different person. Review your proofread notes and resolve any and all issues. This is your final product. And then create an EPUB and a Mobi file with Vellum or draft -to digital or Readsy's free book editor. And then proof those digital files on the e-reading device that you own and or all of the, the in the preview mode on that um, software that you're using to create the file so you can see what it looks like. So be well. Thanks for listening, and I will see you in the next video.